Governor's Ridge, West Virginia, there's this road. It starts out as a two-lane road with nice pavement, with a nice, beautiful yellow line, and then you go further. And then it's a one-lane road, and it's still pretty nice. You know, it's nice and smooth, it's got a white line on both sides. Then you keep going and you pass my house, and then there are potholes. Actually, there are bits of road separated by miles of potholes. And then you pass this little house. It's a beautiful house, or it was a beautiful house. It's a farmhouse, and well, there are rotting floorboards in the porch, and the sh shutters are off its hang, are off the hinges. And there's this little old woman who just recently moved to an old folks' home, but she used to live there. And this story has to do all with her. Now, she and her husband got married when they were young. They've been in love their whole life. Their parents had told them. Don't marry that boy. Don't marry that girl. He did anything. And he built this house for her as their wedding present. And he built it just like he wanted their life to be. Big, because they wanted to be together forever. Sturdy, because he knew they would have a strong marriage. And full of love. He figured she could take care of them. So they built this house, and they've been together for years. They were probably married about five or six years when he got sick. And he got deathly ill. And they were pretty much certain that he was going to die, that she was at his bedside. And they went ahead and dug his grave. This is how bad off he was. But miracle of miracles, he got better. And they lived their life together again. And he started to get much stronger. And they thought, we're going to have kids. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna make it. And then he realized that he was getting sicker and sicker. And finally he was back where he started. And every night she sat up with him. And every night outside she heard these chains rattling. Now what I forgot to tell you is there's a cemetery on the other side of the road. She hears these chains rattling. And it sounds like they're across the street. And when she looks out she doesn't see anything. But she can hear it and she gets this horrible cold feeling after he's asleep. So she decided that she would call in an Indian doctor who still lived around out on the ridge. His family members still live there out today. And he came in and he looked at it and he spent the night one night and he told her the next morning, the angel of death is pacing in that graveyard. There is an unfilled grave and he will not leave until it's filled. So she thought, and she hurried up and called her brother, and they went out, and they filled the grave back up and hoped that would appease him. But sure as clockwork, the next night she was in, sitting up with him. He was wheezing and getting weaker and weaker, and she heard those chains. So she called the doctor back, and she said, what can you do? Isn't there anything you can do that will make him go away? We filled the grave, but he's still there. And he, using his mysterious ways, created this powder that he put around the entire cemetery. And he said, that angel will have to stay inside this border as long as the gate is shut. You won't have to worry about him coming out. But he couldn't do anything about the noise. So every night, she had to listen to these chains rattling, plus taking care of her sick and dying husband. Well, finally, he was just too sick to take care of there. So she called the ambulance, and they came to take him up to Morgantown. Now, this isn't like today. This was quite a while ago. She couldn't afford to hop in the car and drive back and forth to Morgantown every day to be with him. So she was gonna have to spend the night there alone. And even though she was so worried about her husband, she was slightly relieved because she thought, I'm gonna get him to sleep and I won't have to be awake to hear those chains. So she curled up in her bed and pulled the cover up to her chin in. And she listened. And she didn't hear anything. And she listened harder. And then she heard something. She heard these chains. They were rattling, but they were getting farther and farther away. It was like they were going up the road towards Morgantown. And that morning when they called her, she was already crying. She said, he's gone, isn't he? He died last night, didn't he? And they didn't know how she knew. 
she told her family that she heard that angel go up the road after him. But she didn't open the gate. She didn't know how anyone opened the gate. But sure enough, when she went outside, it was open. Well, they fixed him up, and they had his funeral. And the hearse came, and he was going to be buried in the family plot right across the road. Well, you see, the hearse, the hearse is shorter than the ambulance. And it didn't have to open the gate when it turned around to get out. That's a story from Ruthanne Music's Telltale Eye Bush, entitled The Gate. <laughs> 